great put into that game number one by Superstars. Yeah, a pleasant surprise for them. Uh, very much so. You know, it was taking the success we saw out of week number four, adding a little bit on top. They weren't able to get the game, but I, I, sometimes, you know, that doesn't really matter. In my opinion, that improvement is far better than, you know, maybe cheesing out a win. So I, I love that from Superstars. It's exciting to see them play um, here at HCC. It is, and I'm so excited for our next games. Before we get to that, we have something super special for you guys. We have a giveaway going on right now. We've got gear and our newest hero, Lucio Bundles. That ribbit skin is amazing. So make sure you check out that website that's there and we're gonna have winners selected March 4th. And if you know you ever play in your quick match game or whatever genre type that you enjoy playing the most of Heroes of the Storm, I promise you Lucio is about as fun as it gets on support as oh, it possibly yeah. can get. You get to make the plays, you wall ride, you're knocking people into your team, you know, you Boopin can break up. it down, you Boop. can slow it, everything. He's a, he's a lot of fun. Uh, so I, I yeah, it's a good time. Hopefully you guys music. get in that. And, uh, and the music is only just, you know, the cherry on top there. Uh, but we're going to be looking towards game two here for Superstars and Tempo Storm. And it's it's going to be an interesting one. I think I don't I'm questioning if that first game, because it was comfortability for both sides, if that was the best we're going to see out of Superstars here. Yeah. Or is it going to be the worst? Right. It, I can see it being one or the other. It's going to be polar in some way. But was that like that was it? And then it's going to be like two level leads from this point on. Or in fact, was that like that was the best is going to get or the worst is going to be. It, and suddenly, you know, we have games on games on games here in the series. Yeah, that's always the difference when you talk about that skill deficiency and the team that you would say is um, lower is the one who picks the first map. But speaking of battlegrounds, let's see what the next game is going to be on. Superstars have the potential if they want to just choose a second battleground. If that's what they have planned, is they know exactly that they just want to make sure that they're the ones picking it. They did pick Towers of Doom. Do they want first pick or do they want to choose battleground? It looks like it was a battleground choice. Now, the last time, Dread, we saw Superstars favor battleground pick over first pick. They took us to Braxis Holdout. And was do you remember what? Well, wasn't that no, Joe Gall? Oh, that was Cho Gall. That was, you're right. That, one, that was probably the Cho Gall game here. I can look into the drafts to double check there, but that is, uh, I. I, I, let's do, let's I go. Don't, I, don't, I don't think it's gonna be another chill goal, um, or at least for the sake of SS Hosty. I hope it's not. You oh, know, because, the old SS Hosty. Oh, never forget. You know, it's it's uh -uh. Oh, always a place in our hearts here at HCC. <laughs> Either way, getting into the draft, Zarya has got to be a talking point. She's almost seems permanent banned onto this map. The threat she provides into the choke, yeah. uh, being able to buy time there onto the channel itself is a fear. And Varian removed, so looking towards removal of kill potential into the four man. I automatically think that's a JoJo pick on the side of Temple the minute I see that man. I do too. And especially knowing that Superstar. Oh, Zarya let through. Johanna is. Uh, Johanna's been a staple for Superstars too. She is undefeated for Superstars. They're four out of four with her. So the one of the best heroes, if not the best for them statistically. But Zarya's still up. Tempo Storm now with first pick. Do they want her? Do they want Morales? This do they want, um, they do want I was going to say, it would actually be mind-blowing to me if they didn't first pick the Zarya. Not because I think she's genuinely that good on this map that it can't be denied, but because of her prevalence in the ban phase mm -hmm. of this map. It has always been the second team looking to be able to remove that Zarya, and if not, most of the time she's going to be first picked there. We've even seen Temple do that into the best. It would be more of that, like, you know, why does it keep getting banned but never picked kind of phenomenon. We've seen that at times, you know. Uh, we've had the weird Morales uh, here and there in the past, but it is going to be the lock-in. So where do we want to see Superstars going into their draft? What are they going to lean toward? I still think one of these is going to be Morales for Superstars. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be the Gul'dan rotation with it. Maybe with Mouth up, though. So They're going to go with the ball, though. Okay, so sticking a little bit more to their comfort. This is the exact rotation that we did see, you know, uh, Gale Force have against them into this position. Gale Force was able to get the win against Superstars I on this map. TC Malfurion. For Tempo Storm, I'm. Um, that is a rave party with Malfurion. Uh, really surprising to see ETC over Johanna. I actually think I think that changed the minute the Zarya was let through. I, I think the Varian ban goes to if the Zarya is banned out, then you move into the JoJo. By having Zarya ETC, the pseudo supporting uh, provided together, that I mean that is the duo, right? That is Zarya's release was the rise of ETC as a support or as a, a warrior, a main solo warrior at least. Um, so I think that has a little bit to do with that. We do see the Gul'dan. 
Uh, in fact, remove it. Look at that. I mean, cattle there. Three and one on Zarya. Just so you guys know at home, uh, this is a huge thanks for all the stats coming out from the business intelligence team at Blizzard. They're putting these stats together so we, in fact, can share all the awesome, you know, analytics of HTC with you guys at home. Oh my gosh, yeah. They have been giving us so many incredible statistics, updating them nightly. So thank you, BI team. You guys rock. Medivh Ban for Tempo Storm now. And Superstars with the next two picks. Cho and Gaul. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I, where is it? Where is it gonna move into the Morales? What? I think they would have banned Tychus if they took Cho off. Yeah, that makes more sense. You know, Insane Johanna calls. pick up there, comfort. They have wave clear solid. You know, across the board, it's gonna be the Rexar. Misha, in fact, is going to be into the top lane here. What's the matchup then? Illidan. Illidan. Oh, are they gonna do double support? No, they already have Zarya. Oh man! Right? Please, not another right? one. I, I, I'm. I'm actually getting saddened by how many double supports we see. <laughs> double support, double warrior dream? I don't know. Uh, it, yeah, it is It is an option for Tempo Storm. It, it, it's been... What would... Co Co it's Cawthon's hero is what's left, which has been the second support before. Don't get me wrong. You can run with... The, I mean, there's... Tychus is still up. You still have the option to move into. Even the false ad's still going to be an option here. Yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of tools. There's no force by any means into that direction. Who is soloing here? Illidan? Illidan. Illidan should be the solo, I yeah. think. Unless... Unless they have some, you know, kind of creative format. Yeah, it's going to be Illidan into the solo. So, uh, Rexar, Misha, and Illidan are going to dangle into the top lane. The thought process, I believe... I actually... This is a weird mission matchup between Illidan and Rexar by by the insta lock I'm guessing the main thought process is you just ignore Misha it, a lot of people you know Rexar himself has very low HP and the mobility that Illidan has is one of few um, that can can really just kind of die past him plus the wave clear um, I expect it to be an immolation I would be very surprised if it's going to be the batter to soul yeah um, but if it was then in theory it would be hitting Misha and Rexar at the same time with game value uh, that seems way too unrealistic uh, so I th expect the immolation pressure into it will be really hard um, for the Rexar to be able to deal with. Do Tempo Storm take a page out of Gale Force Esports book and go with the hunt for Morales? Uh, Focus Morales! I think you could. I don't think it's the safe route because we yeah. have, you know, a double support. So, I mean, just oh, we're going to see it time and time again, I guess. I, I don't know. At this point... How do I say this? I, it, it, it's, it's, a tough, it's a tough spot. I don't know how to describe <laughs> this. We've seen like four double supports in North America. Every single one suffers from the exact same problem. Not enough damage. They out sustain, things look good, but they just legitimately every fight don't have enough DPS to be able to push their opponents off the objective. Obviously, we're looking to see that change here if Superstars has what it takes with that draft, but I am not convinced that they have the damage resources and tools with the Solo Vala um, as the DPS here in this game. We had one Illidan yesterday, right? I believe so off the top of my head. Do you yeah. remember if it won? I was uh, trying to find that in my notebook. <laughs> no, I don't remember off the top of my head. BI, oh, it did. Business it did. intelligence, get on top it of did. it. It did. Okay, so Illidan won, but before that, he has had one of the lowest win rates. Yes, he's been struggling. Teams have had a lot of trouble, especially Tempo Storm, I would say, with making Illidan work in HTC North America so far. But they're willing to give it another shot, so the change here is obviously they have Zarya along with it. They near insta locked it. That confidence alone makes me feel like it, it was a very calculated, uh, and it seems situational that insta lock shows, you know, they saw the Rexar, they thought the Rexar was going to come out, and they're like, we know this matchup, it's going to win, yeah. it's fine, whatever. Like, even if he's not doing that well, this is a map where you can justify that solo being kind of, you know, a little unique, like the Rexar coming out because of the laning phase being that important. So if the mismatch, mismatch is that drastic, it goes as severe as if a Gazlo even was that much more dominant than everybody else, it might be a justifiable pick. Um, that's how important it is, uh, it, the solo lane here into this game. That being said, you just swap. I, if, if it's really that big of a deal, I would just look to get the swap on the side of uh, superstars if they look like they're going to be struggling. Swap the four-man, make Tempo be a little less comfortable with that Illidan matchup because he does nothing on the defensive. Yeah, we'll see how the four-man now will do for Tempo Storm if Illidan's not able to keep up with Rexar. We're heading into Brax's holdout for game number two. If he's going to match up with the Rexar. It is an, it's a very interesting... Uh, sequence there when it comes to the 1v1s. I think the 4v4 looks very interesting too because superstars have Brightwing and Morales. 
How did we miss these? I, I just brought it up. I just said they're running <laughs> another double support. I didn't let this one slip past. Oh, I thought, I don't know why, no. but I was looking at Zarya Malfurion. And I put my heart and soul on the I... line. I just said, I've never seen double support do very well. It's a double warrior double support on yes. top of it. It is the build the Vala. This just in, Vala doesn't do that much damage on her own. Yeah, okay, either. so then Tempo Storm know then that the four man's looking really good for them because they have Malfurion for sustain, they have Johanna oh, to help mix, with though. that too. It's a 3-2 split. Ooh. Brightwing going top to eight. Is that how bad the mismatch is or is this the... Sh oh, that's interesting. If the mismatch is so bad that Brightwing has to go up there to be able to aid the Rexar into Illidan, is that the answer for the pick? There's no way. Now she's that is not yeah. Okay, I was like, because if it really was that bad, um, it makes little sense, but they did do a lot of DPS there. Um, very heavily to the top half, so I'm struggling a bit. On the bottom, though, Cawthon struggling equally hard. Yeah, we look at the traditional heroes who are really good here in the four man and Braxis. You've got Tychus who can melt people down really fast with the health bars, especially Johanna once he gets them, like the bigger they are likely to get there. Um, Zarya's gonna help with shielding, Malfurion helps a lot with sustaining, especially with mana. On the other side, Having double support and especially Lieutenant Morales to just sit and heal up Stray for days while sitting on the point. I, I'm very excited to see how this format can work out between the two teams. Yeah, but for now it's gonna be, you know, the wave clear game, the sustain overall. It really doesn't matter that much until it comes to the shrine unless one team dominates in the wave clear department. That's not really gonna be the case here. Um, Stray though getting caught out a little bit, he's gonna pop the iron skin, get the shield out from uh, or the healing beam from Icona. We do not see any uh, major adjustments when it comes to the Brightwing Guild. No, he's going to be into the double support. Pixie Charm, though. Uh, yeah, it, it's a little different, but I, it's not the, you know, oh, this is the double support Brightwing Guild. Right. It's just, uh, you know, we've seen it here and there. It's going to help with the pressure onto the map. Yeah, it's so cool to see here on Braxis. And it's pretty easy to move over to the Hellbat camp, especially. Uh, trauma Trigger, though, I think is the first time we've seen an actual Trauma Trigger from Lieutenant Morales, maybe in response to the Illidan. Um, on Rexar's side, he did get Bird of Prey again, which we saw the last time we had Rexar here, so Spirits was doing more damage to the minions. Moonburn, instead of scouting drone for Malfurion for the same adjustment, everything else that he's going to So yeah, a little bit of a, a change up in some of the talents that we see in response to the map and the opponent's competition. Yeah, and also, oh, great power side. The root follow-up is going to be there. Healing Beam out from Iacona. Great safeguard as well. They're going to be able to peel off their Shrey now moving onto the channel. He manages to get this. He will control both of the Shrines for a short period of time. Tempo is going to look for this deny here. It's going to be successful for now. Um, I, I've been keeping track of the 1v1 a little bit for you guys at home, and it does seem like Rexar is... He's not dominating, but he's definitely not losing the matchup. So that Insulok not as convincing as maybe... Um, I thought it would be here. Uh, as long as Misha remains close, it does force Misha to not be on her own as much uh, as we've seen in the past. You know, she's kind of on her own island, holding everything. Uh, they're sticking together, but they are doing well there into the Odin. Level four talents available for both teams. Superstars and the rest. Uh, trying to force Temple Storm off this bottom lane, utilizing the constant heals from Sprey. They're starting to bully Tempo Storm back a little bit, but Tempo Storm, every time that they get another uh, shield available from Cattle, someone's on the point, and the damage that Cattle's are putting out, especially with having constant oh. energy, that's a great power Huge. slide. Follow up fruit, double kill for uh, Tempo Storm. They're very well done, Fury, there. The isolation between, obviously, the Icona and Sprey there. Uh, Sprey's gonna be making out just fine. Good grenade to get the heal. Uh, but just any kind of split, great power slide, enough to be able to get the pick off there. And this is going to lead to a large percentage there onto the Shrine. And it's, it's not even going to be stopped. Building can get the 1-1 into Misha. Brightwing did teleport towards top, though. Good job buying the peel and getting the pick. A turn here for Superstars. Cost them a bit on the Zerg Rush percentage, but I'm going to say worth. Careful for pushing in the bottom lane for Tempo Storm. How much they do with it now? remains to be seen, especially with Brightwing and Rexar Misha up top, but Brightwing's gonna be the one who solo soaks the top versus CTC, so that Rexar and Misha can come down to help out with defending the Surf Rush as fast as they can. One thing to note that we saw during this first round phase, other than obviously the isolation and the beautiful power slide that led to the situation we're in, um, even still looking at Superstar's draft, the health bars were dropping faster than that of Temple Storm. Even with the double support, again, the damage output trade-off doesn't, at least not yet, seem to be outscaling. Uh, you know, the, the, the supporting is not outdoing the loss of damage that really uh, Superstars managed to pick up. And Brightwing not going into maybe like a full kill build. It, you know, she hasn't made any huge adjustments to increase her damage output. That being said, it's not like it's that big of a spike even when you do. I wonder if Brightwing's gonna go full utility Brightwing and get full. 
Is that, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to even think if Brightwing still has them, does she? I, I don't even remember. I think she does. We'll find out. We got a couple of seconds. Yeah, though. we don't see it very often. So you, is, you see those um, talent reworks come in. It's uh, sometimes hard to remember who still has what. Johanna trying to get out. Thom continuing the chase. Icon of the one in trouble. Uses trauma trigger at that point. That's going to be down soon, though. Fury dives in and a kill on Lieutenant Morales. Yeah, we saw Brightwing trying to get the kill. In fact, it's not going to be moving in the direction, nor is it going to be cleansed. Uh, going with the shielding, uh, you saw the easy work that someone's making of the medic there. <laughs> Not much she can do. It's pretty much near impossible to hit a valuable grenade, and even when you do, W or Q pretty much makes up for that distance and is on a significantly shorter cooldown. Everything else, though, uh, a little bit of what we would expect across the board. Rexar has, in fact, moved into at level 7 there, going with the aspect of the beast, allowing Misha to get more of her uh, charges off. Yeah, may be the difference of being able to make sure that Illidan is contained and not chasing down uh, Lieutenant Morales and Brightwing, especially Morales as she was. But when she gets medevac dropship, she'll also have a little bit better of a way of taking care of herself. The beacon phase has been dealt with, so both teams moving on to get their mercenary camps, as well as the pressure to get to their heroic abilities. Yeah, Tempo, it's a weird position. Tempo obviously having the lead into this match so far, but it was just one major mistake when it came to positioning uh, that cost them the spot that they're at so far. So I really want to see, you know, now that we're resetting and things are so close, what does this four versus four look like in the shrine? And I think it's going to be telling. Just constantly note the HP. Um, if we see the side of Superstar dropping a little bit more, again, the lack of damage on the double support, or do they manage to finally be able to out sustain here now that we see it at eight? Every time Faye gets caught from the power slide in the roots, there's Icon has to go into overdrive with those healing beams. But with a phase shift two and shielding, Faye will be healed right back up. They are keeping people alive, but it's kind of the same situation we see over and over again, where, yeah, somebody stays alive a lot of the time. But you aren't killing them faster not, than they're killing you. Right, you're not killing anybody. And yeah. then eventually something messes up, whether somebody runs out of mana or somebody's out of position and separated away. And then the deaths come in eventually anyway. I, I, honestly, Cawthon is the only person who's sitting lower. Look, they get chunked to half, everybody heals back up, they reinitiate, and Tempo just goes, you know, June's just like, I'm having a heyday over here. I'm just looking to set up roots because I have no pressure on me whatsoever. And you know, the worst part about it is he can even spec differently into this build to make that even worse. If this makes it post 16, going with the heart and focus, you'll be able to, you know, make up for it even more. That being said, I expect Brightwing fully to move into the double or to Emerald Wind. Uh, forward kill potential onto the Illidan, increasing yeah. her passive healing overall. Um, it's going to be a decent power play, and she's going to have to interrupt maybe for a potential Moss Pit. But again, it is so far, you know, same comp, same story is what we see here so far. Um, I really am trying to look for the silver lining. For uh, yeah, at first I was like, okay, I get it. Second time it was like, eh. Um, and he does go into them with him. Special wrath too. It's gonna be. It's used as well. Ooh, going the in. Hunt. Jumping on top. Ball is eliminated. Morales not long for this world either. Although Brightwing's doing what she can. Oh, Emerald Wind buys time. Icon is so low. Calculated. Ooh. That's. Is all he's walking away like, yeah, I got this, not a big deal. Uh, but that was not pretty for the initiation into that fight. Keep in mind with Brightwing not going lens, it puts it to where Medic is a extremely vulnerable target onto the hunt. There's zero saying no to it, but also, you know, if you go to cleanse, that will only help hurt the supporting even more on the side of Superstars. And let's be honest here, the amount of supporting they have right now has still not been enough. So we'll see now. We are in to another phase. Uh, the hunt here looks like it's going to be back up already, or at least my overlay is going to bug. I think it's up. Hello? That's not, that's not possible. There's no way. Uh, I'll look into that in just a moment here, guys. Uh, but for now, we are looking at the shrines, the four versus four, or the four versus three, and the two versus one up on top. I guess if you count Misha, it's just the one. That's respect. Cow versus bear, who really wins? Should be bear, I would think. Yeah. Basic laws of nature. Is, is, but this is that is a lawn? Is that lawn nature? This is a battle cow, though. Yeah, he ro <laughs> he rocks out, man. I mean, it, it, it's a tough one, you know. We need we need to watch this intensely for science. <laughs> Scientific purposes. Forget the uh, bird, butterfly, birdman battles here in the bottom. It's all about bear versus cow on top. Mercenary camp gonna help out cow in the top lane, as well as Illidan, but Superstar is solidly holding on to the bottom beacon. Unfortunately for them, they're in a bad spot. 
76% of the beacon progress has been completed by Tempo Storm, and that is going to be a lot of pressure in that top lane that's already being uh, under siege from the mercenary camp. I think this situation, oh man, the flank from Psalm there, he's actually going to retreat. He's waiting to hunt. It's like a matter of time. Wait for it. Three, two, one. Pick off. Boom! Do they get a kill? Instant phase shift Emma to help Wood. out. Oh, not even going to use that. I thought that was the perfect moment, but not going to be the case. Sway's in a bad spot. Hats back on out here. Uh, but just, a, again, progress support here on the double support. Didn't even really convincing win a 3v4, to be honest. Rift down. Emerald Wind. Not doing too much. Zerg Rush complete. Tempo Storm gets a Zerg Rush. Superstar is slightly ahead in experience, but not enough to dissuade Tempo Storm pushing along with their Zerg. Are you ready for it? Uh, we have liftoff in T minus 15 seconds. Over. Oh. It's going to be uh, the hunt play is going to be real relatively soon here. But for now, no one will win this time, but a rain of vengeance possibly to stop him in his tracks. Yeah, it's uh, it's a very weird trade off that Illidan is, you know, it looks like everything the superstars is going to be doing is just fully worrying about him. Right. And they're yet to even really be able to get a pick off, even when he's diving up to force onto Morales there with the hunt. Medivac's down. Let's do this. Flying in to stop the defense. At least this will get Superstars into position fast. They I, don't lose too much more on the bottom. I would pay so many dollars to have a Morales Leroy Jenkins skin where every time I do that, like something goes, you know, it does the calculation and it goes, time's up, let's do this. It just, I, 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 Blizzard, please. I need this. I'm throwing my money at the screen right now. He is. I see it. <laughs> but for now. Can confirm. Superstars not even 13 talents here. We're going to see them pick it up. The question is here, are they going to be successful yet into this fight? They aren't dying, they just aren't killing any. Oh, they're dying a little bit. They're technically still dying more. Uh, but they, they really just, the damage output doesn't seem high enough yet. Illidan is just waiting to kill Crywing. That's a sad day. Crywing does have Ice Block now, still considering. Crywing's the one who's caught this time. Fury is here no along for the ride. Too. Trying to teleport. And again, got interrupted. He got stopped by face melt. That's it. Oh, if he gets vision. Posty. That's it. He's gonna be just fine. Very well done there. Uh, good interrupt as well. The interrupt is a huge play, but they fact got Tychus on top. Superstars fighting back. They are. Now they have couples therapy. Maybe that's the difference that keeps Lieutenant Morales alive. But they have to be so careful with anybody split soaking, just like Brightwing found out. Uh, Fury, nice patience too, to wait and make sure that he could stop the uh, inevitable phase shift to come in. Yeah, and we're. I'm just, I'm trying to find how, how do we superstars win a fight, right? With this double support, how do they win it? And it feels like a lot of it is just saw him making a colossal mistake or something weird like a meta pack emerald wind bomb or something. I, you know what I mean? Just like mm -hmm. the old school. Uh, bright wing bomb. Yeah, the bright wing bomb and just give it with the meta pack. But even then that seems unrealistic. It'll get interrupted. You'll be rooted. Um, you can't meta back in the middle of a team. Uh, so, it just, it looks like it's just going to be, again, it's like slowly dying out. What do we do to be able to change the tide? So the plan for them seems to be in 5v5 team fights. Like you said, just try to kill Som. I think the original to thought process, Som. to be honest, I think the original thought process is Rexar wins top. But if we can just out sustain overall on bottom, things are going to be fine. Right? And Illidan hunted. Things are not fine. Illidan confirmed. And Illidan walks away happy that his team is now going to have a huge advantage onto the Zerg Rush. Oh, just for Brightwing. Oh, my. Is that a beast? Set? June? Is that you? I don't I don't know if I was seeing things, but I'm pretty confident June's B7. That doesn't seem very June-like, but I like it if it was. June should have the confidence to yeah. be The way he has been playing this HDC in North America. Simple Storm. Going to get the boss, 16 talent tier two, a full Zerg beacon phase. And we have seen this before from teams, this complete domination with the uh, boss Can you remind me of what phase. that looks like? Why, yeah. why doesn't Som do it right here? Yeah. Uh, you know, the fact that the hunt was used uh, is a pretty big win. It's Bolson zone. Oh, the free plans okay. uh, by Icon. Emerald win! Stage dive as well. That could be a power slide of the century. Um, but, you know, a little bit too deep there onto the stage dive. Tempo Storm's going to back out 16 talents here. Still at 100% uh, onto the Zerg Rush there in the top lane. 
Billiton's going to join, but he's got only, I mean, it says 20 seconds, but it's more like 10 before he's going to have that hunt right on back. Yeah, he has been chewing through that uh, respawn time or every single time with his abilities. Hunt seems like it's always up and always a factor for the first twice. They've lost right wing. Now they're going to lose their keep. Maybe even the game right here. It, Unless they could do something to stop Tempo's going. I, I am just waiting for the hunt to come into play. They're going to back up. They're going to double. Okay, they're going to double keep there with Illidan on the boss, Zerg Rush on the bottom. It's. There's, I'm just looking for the turning point, and again, just with this difficult draft and the lack of damage into an Illidan, it's going to be a tough one. The keep there, sitting about 75 HP. Boss is going to go down. Third row is still pressured, but not onto anything major. The 16 Stars, stuff. They do get 16. They save their keep, their one keep. Uh, they save the game. They don't lose there. And they don't have to worry about, about boss for a long while now here. But Will they recognize that Tempo Storm are lying in wait to be able to end the game? Another party. Another party abandoned. RSVP has been sent out. Two superstars check mark the box that says yes. Or do they go now? Oh. Looks like. Oh, there might be yes. Oh, looks, oh, but Fury pulled feet, walked away. 16th birthday party. Was a little bit afraid. You know, a lot of pressure. Popular kids are going to be there. All of Superstars was going to show up. He backed out and gave up the <laughs> camp. He's not even willing to take his own presence. Actually, he did. He got a gift. He, he got did. The gift. He, he took it and then he left it yeah. at the same time. Uh, you know, I can respect that. Uh, but I, honestly, shout out to Fury, though. I can I, 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 I felt that pressure on my own birthday, too. I get it, man. It's cool. It's fine. Nobody's judging. And Misha is going to casually walk in and invade the camp. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Coming through. <laughs> the space bear just comes in. No respect. Fury, he d oh, I just looks him in the eyes and says, it's my birthday too. <laughs> oh, man. That was a doozy, but they're going for a back door. Uh, just casual back door here. Oh, with uh, Illidan, nobody's even backing yet. So yeah. now all Tempo Storm have to do is stop the backs. Uh, unless Medivac Dropship can get them back in time. Hoshi's here. Now they walk away. And that was the end of that. Good. Ollie slows. He's fine. He's got Dash. He's got Friend or Foe as well. Minion Wave's going to be there soon. And if they overextend a little bit too far, they might look to return. But I, I, that play by Temple is one that I personally love. Uh, there is nothing that hurts the morale more, No matter, even though nothing changes, than forcing your opponent to react to you. Like, even if you gain nothing out of it, you feel play the whole game saying, Superstars, look at me, answer to me, and then they can't, and then you go, look at me, and you do that. It is so frustrating to play against. Uh, it's personally one of my favorite ways to shot call. Like, if, if I, any time I can do that, I will do that uh, to my opponent saying it. It could only is going to further, I feel like, the morale here of Superstars into this match. Even though, yes, it does look like they are in it. Are they really? They've never had a moment of control up into this game. Minus, you know, the few two kills early on. And Superstars, too, are starting to just get like, okay, we're getting our momentum back. We got a mercenary camp. Our bear just looked death in the face and yeah. said, rar, and took it. And they had to go back to their base. Yeah, it's, it's just a tough spot to be in here. But Superstars understand that they need to get into a fight. So they're going to move back in. They know where Tempo Storm are going to be. So they try to make it. The bear once again going onto the point. Sray is there too. The hunt goes down onto Iacona. Explosion zone to zone. He's trying to keep the, the healing as much as he can up on himself. But with only couples therapy, he'll fall. Bala drops to full retreat for Superstars. Yeah, Misha there trying to do what she can. But her owner going down. Five man wipe here for Tempo Storm. 35 seconds to do whatever they want onto the map. Looks like that's going to be a bit of a Zerg rush. The Psalm has other plans. Stage dive in from Fury. That looks like they have their eyes towards the core. And honestly, there is nothing on the side of Superstars to be able to stop. Temple Storm takes down the core and claims victory in game number two in the series over Superstars. One final game standing between them and ensuring that they can have, I believe, number one seed going to the Western Clash of North America. I am ready to be done with those. Um, we've had it. We've seen a couple of versions. I would rather Zul'jin. I'm ready for the Zul'jin. Bring that out. I can see I can see the argument behind that one, but I, I, I don't love it, uh, but I can see the argument there. The double support, it just, it's the same thing over and over again. And Brightwing's always that one. Brightwing's always moving into supporting. And every single time, it's like, 
they just don't have enough damage to outscale uh, everybody else. You watch what you say about my bright wing. <laughs> I guess. That was a savage look. <laughs> I apologize, but lines were drawn. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> no, it did seem to be a, a very difficult spot for superstars. It just put yeah. them in an even more difficult position. But it, the Illidan just might have thrown them for a loop. So we'll see how they make the adjustments going into the next game right after this break. We'll see you for game three. of the storm. Prepare for Heroes Brawl, the new game mode that breaks all the rules. Rated T for Teen. It's not easy being queen. <laughs> so many subjects to keep in line. So many scores to settle. I am the sworn. And vengeance has never looked this good. Welcome back to HGC North America. We're smack dab in our series between Tempo Storm and Superstars. Tempo Storm with a 2-0 lead now over Braxis holdout. Tough losses for Superstars to lose on temp uh, Towers of Doom and Braxis, two battlegrounds that they feel really comfortable on. But yep. you could also say the same for Tempo Storm, right? It's you knew, they knew they were going to be going into battlegrounds where Tempo Storm also felt a lot of comfort. Yeah, and uh, it's just it's one of those you know we talked about game after game one. It was that the best or the worst that we're going to see of Superstars that last game composition was a little bit off play necessarily not that dramatic, uh, but it does feel like you know that may have been you know the high that was that was it that was Towers they're going to go in they're going to see how it works out. Tempo played calculated punished that one major mistake and snowballed it back. And now I am fearful of game number three. I think the most important thing for Superstars is if they choose a map, do not pick one that both of them like. Because because we've seen that obviously is not going to work out here. Take him something weird, something we know the Temple struggles with. Maybe even like Battlefield. Battlefield, you know? right? Yeah. Well, before we get into that Battleground ban and see what it is that Superstars will be doing, we have a tweet from you guys. Aku Baking, Space Bears have no respect. This is true because when I can beat Cheerleague, that's our teams. Team Space Bear. We have no respect for our opponents because we're going to win the video game. No, not really. Uh, it's a lot of fun to be able to play that. But yeah, they, she had no respect. She just walked in, looked him in the eyes, she and said, like, uh, and everyone's like, oh, wow, that's a bear. Uh -huh. There's a bear in this game? 
<laughs> they see the bear and they're just like, uh, I guess, yeah, you can have that. <laughs> you really want it? Yeah. Go ahead, Misha. It's it, all yours. I mean, it is a little weird it just to see a Misha just roaming on her own, just fly out and just, you know, leap up onto it with the animation. But yeah, it was it was a little bit funny, but in the end, it just wasn't enough, you know? Double sport, enough. double warrior. Me, not even Misha can carry that, really, you know? Yeah. Not a big enough saddle. Let's see if it's the Battlefield of Eternity that Superstars want to go to or if they're going to switch things up and go for first pick. The two bands were Cursed Hollow and Infernal Shrines. We covered Towers of Doom and Braxis Holdout. Where's the next game going to be? Dragonshire picked, picked by Tempo. I have a theory here. You hit me with it. Dragonshire has been played quite a lot in Europe, right? Yes. I wonder if Tempo Storm's just like, okay, we are going to get a little practice in on Dragonshire here. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Are we going to see Zulm the Zebo then? Is that, is that the answer? It's just going to bust out the kicking it old school EU style? I, I would like it. Honestly, I really would enjoy it if that's the direction they want to move into the draft. Uh, whether or not they will, different story. Yeah, it is, it is, it is funny how uh, we've seen a shift in priority and preference of maps around the world. Dragonshire went from uh, non-existent to suddenly relatively relevant, I guess. Uh, but then maps like uh, seeing the Infernal Shrines has been near the death of that map for some reason. Uh, Warhead still, you know, it's just kind of just it's, it's a stepchild that nobody really loved. Uh, still, it's yet to it's yet to reach its priority and uh, favor for HDC. Yeah, it's very niche when people want to choose that. Superstars banning Dahaka. Huh, I very much thought that Superstars would want that to hawk We're gonna first pick Fawcett. That's the only way, right? Or the Zeratul. They're gonna deny a Zeratul. Debatably not Zeratul's best map. It always comes down to the focus put towards the top lane. And seems weird considering the ban onto the top lane. Now that still leaves, as always, the Fawcett here. This is, oh man. This is going to be interesting. We did see Tempo, the only game that we managed to get them onto this map against No Tomorrow. They did pick uh, Zero Tool themselves in the 2 3 rotation. So it's a deny. But the Malfurion's still up. We still have the opportunity to, you know, I, I think like a Malfall set is an insane rotation here for Tempo. Maybe go into the Varian, look for more kill potential, possibly. Malfurion Varian, does that leave I mean, sure. damage down too far, though? Just focus on kill potential. We've seen what Jaina can do on this map. It's gross, and you don't even have to fully go that direction. You go with the ETC, they go with the Malfurion. Okay, so sticking to what they know, still leaving the opportunity to bring the EU dream alive, where we get Zul. At least Zul, please. I would really like a Zul. I want, I want Zul. I want a Zul Jaina specifically. That's the duo I would like to see the most. Uh, well, especially with Zeratul. Yes. Rhaegar Falstad. No surprise, really. Um, with the lack of 